What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Amy Braganini, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Grand Rapids, Michigan. All right, well, welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Today, we have Amy Braganini, a fellow media spokesperson that lives in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We, uh, She's a first, uh, first term. She just started in the program, and I'm going to give her the platform. We're going to put her in the hot seat here. So she is in the hot seat. Just take your time, relax, no pressure. Okay. And go ahead, and the floor is yours. Go. Okay. Well, thank you, first of all, so much for having me. Um, as you know, I'm a little bit nervous about this, and it's I've done a few podcasts before, so I think it was something that I just, um, talking to a fellow spokesperson and an established dietitian, you know, it's a little bit more unnerving, but you're so easy to talk to. So again, I appreciate it. But Absolutely. so I'm Amy Braganini. Um, I am a registered dietitian in Grand Rapids. And when I think about my journey into dietetics, um, it's maybe a little different from some other people's. I, in high school, came from a very small school and I really did like biology and sciences. So I knew I kind of wanted to do something with that. And in high school, I think even above that, I really liked basketball. I love to play basketball. Um, I was pretty good at it. So academics were important, but so was basketball. So I ended up getting a full ride basketball scholarship to a university in Indiana, Tri-State University, go Thunder. And uh, I was pretty excited to be there. The college was mostly engineer as a major, and I, never, I didn't really want to go that route. So I majored in biology because that was what was offered. And even before I got to college, um, I, I had a few struggles in high school where I have a tendency to have a per perfectionistic and kind of anxious personality, if you didn't get that. So I developed a pretty wicked eating disorder. I had bulimia. And this carried with me into college. And looking back and through all my therapy, I realized that it was just the change of, you know, going to college and leaving everything that I knew. I think that I was pretty terrified and that was my coping mechanism. And it persisted for a while. Um, throughout my college career, I actually was benched in basketball because I had lost too much weight. And that's when I saw my first registered dietitian. And I wasn't ready to um, give up or work on my disorder at that point. So I do remember my experience with the dietitian. It was positive. And I actually thought she was very interesting and she had a lot of really cool things to say. But at that point, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in change. I was just interested in playing basketball and managing it. Um, but it did get me thinking about nutrition. So throughout uh, my junior year, I remember this, I'll never forget it my father said to me, what are you going to do with a biology degree when you graduate? And I honestly, I haven't even thought about it. I was like, well, I actually do not know. And I probably should have, have saw a counselor or had talked to somebody as far as what could be my career goals after college. But I, in my mind thought, I kind of maybe want to dive into the nutrition world. And I, I wasn't sure if I should. Um, I didn't know if having an eating disorder would make it a challenge or make me not eligible, you know, to, to go into that kind of line of work. But my parents knew um, a person that worked at Western Michigan University as a professor, and she's a registered dietitian. So I spoke with her and I was told that when I graduate, taking my biology credits, I could go to um, the school in Kalamazoo, Michigan, Western Michigan, and I could take two years of courses to then apply for an internship, which I did. And I did get an internship um, through Central Michigan University, and I did that for a year. Again, this this podcast experience has been so fun because I got to look back and think, why didn't I apply um, to other places? I applied to the four closest universities to my hometown. And so now looking back, and maybe we'll talk about this a little later, but um, I think that would be something that I would probably do a little different, but we'll get to that. So mm -hmm. my internship went really good and I ended up graduating in 2001. 
and I was offered a position with Sodexo. And the position was pretty enticing because it was a reserve traveling dietitian position. And I was told that in the Sodexo tri-state area, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, that if um, there was a Sodexo employee dietitian that was either on maternity leave or um, off for surgery, I could fill in and, and I was single and I got to keep my stuff at my parents, which I'm sure they were thrilled about. And I got to travel. So my first stop in the Sodexo world was actually about 20 minutes from my mom and dad's house. So I was in the maternal support services world there and it was interesting. It was an eye opener for me. Um, I, I didn't have a lot of engagement um, from the patients and, and now I look back and I think, was it that the patients weren't interested or was it that I was just fresh out of my internship and I didn't know how to connect with them? And I actually think it's the latter. I blame myself on that one, but I think if I was to do that all over again, it would be a much different experience, but that that part went well. And so my next rotation, they didn't have a clinical position open. So they found a, a place in Ohio in Cleveland that was launching a room service dining menu and they wanted me to help kind of launch it. So I found myself living in a Holiday Inn in Ohio, six hours away from home, and I worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the kitchen. Okay. And so nothing wrong with that at all. However, um, it was it felt a lot like I was kind of back in my food service rotation in my internship. Again, nothing wrong with that, but it didn't really set well with me. Plus, I was terribly lonely. You know, um, I wasn't that great at making friends, but also the hours working weren't that great. So Long story short, Sodexo is a great company and I really appreciated my time with them. But um, I had a friend that worked in Grand Rapids, Michigan at actually my current organization and she worked in the cath lab and she happened to hear of a registered dietitian position opening up. And I applied and I got it. And that was in 2001. So um, I began working just clinical on the floors and about a year and a half, two years into my stay, one of the dietitians that I had gone to school with um, was doing per diem cancer care. So at the time we didn't have the cancer center that I'm working in right now built, but there was a small area across the street that she would be per diem. So she would run over if there was a, a patient in need. And when she got over there, she found that all the nurses pounced on her because they were like, oh, fresh blood, you're a dietitian. We need you for this patient, this patient, this patient, this patient, because right. there is there's such a need. So. She ended up moving and I took over her position and I have been here pretty much. I was here for about 15 years um, until 2016 during cancer care. I always explain that it was such a lucky, a lucky um, opportunity for me. I didn't think I really wanted to do cancer, but again, in my, in my, um, in my nature, I'm, pretty nervous and I'm really ang anxious. I, I feel sometimes like I have imposter syndrome that I don't feel like good enough. And I'm always nervous that I'm going to do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing. Now, mind you, in my days now, I see how far I've come. I've definitely stepped into myself. But, you know, during the time when I was entering the cancer world, my, my bulimia was not as active or bad as it was, but it was still present. And part of me thinks it'll always be present as far as not practicing the eating disorder, but having maybe a little part of my mind. And um, I'm not sure if you ever really get rid of it, but I know that I feel very grateful for all, all of the treatment that I've received and all of the therapy I've gotten and all the, all the work that I've done. I think that I feel really lucky and blessed because I know that it's, it's hard. It's very hard work. Now, I think going into the cancer world, it was a little bit easier for me. And I'm looking back and thinking, maybe this was it. When I'm counseling patients with cancer, usually I'm telling them to eat more. I'm, I'm asking them to eat, drink the milkshakes and to add calories, add protein. And I think, you know, at that time when I wasn't really kind of um, more healed, I think it would have been hard for me to step into a, say, one-on-one -on -one weight management counseling session with someone because I think my own internal 
treatment or my own internal, I would call them issues, maybe. It's right, issues, yeah. You know, um, wasn't necessarily uh, under control at that point. So I don't think that that would have been a very good fit for me. So again, I feel very lucky that I ended up in the cancer world because I know that the advice and the expertise that I was able to offer patients was was really good. And I feel like the absolute appreciation and the connection that I get from patients undergoing treatment for cancer, it's humbling. It's absolutely humbling to see how strong people are and to be, a ba- be able to walk with them as, as part of their, their um, steps through their treatment process. So I, I love it. I adore, I adore what I do. I feel very lucky that I stepped into it. So I was lucky enough about three years into my world in oncology that I sat next to a gentleman that was our physician relations consultant. And he ended up leaving that role and stepping into the, an advertising job. And he, one of his clients was a local juice company and they were hoping to launch a brand of juice where they had a dietitian as an expert, kind of a corporate dietitian. And he knew one dietitian and it was me. Mm-hmm. So they asked me to do that. And that was my first step into the media world in addition to oncology, again, in my Amy form, I was terrified because I didn't think I would be able to do it, but they put my mug on the bottle and I got to answer questions from consumers, everything from how much juice should I feed my child to um, what is a good low sodium diet for hypertension. So I loved that I I was able to do oncology, but also step back into the more general realm of of nutrition, because I think that's another important balance too. I think, you know, to get too tunnel visioned, it's nice to be able to see the big picture. So through there, um, through that company, I was able to get on TV and shoot videos. They had me do, I don't know, probably a total of 15 or so videos which ended up being interesting because it's a little bit different. And I know you know this, Angel, being live on TV versus having to do um, a curated kind of video um, because they always start you over when you mess up. And then once you once you mess up or fumble words, then you have to start over. And then you think about the fumble and messed up words and then you fumble and mess up words. So I think I would much rather be on TV or just do a podcast and talk because, you know, you just make it more off the cuff. But anyway, so that media training was awesome. I was able to be with that company and with the cancer world for a long time. Um, so I feel like I'm still talking, but I'll... Uh, You're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. You're so good. You're in good. 2016, I, um, well, I met someone that lived in Connecticut and we did a long distance relationship for a few years and then we got engaged and then the discussions came of who's going to move Connecticut or Michigan and I ended up applying to a few places in Connecticut one of them is Yale New Haven Health and I got the job so um, I picked up and moved and I was very looking back I'm very, I'm very happy that I did that. I have never left basically, as I mentioned before, this area and I never left my family. I never really left all my friends in my community here, but I packed my bags and sold my house and I moved out to Connecticut. I knew one person in Connecticut and that was my fiance. Uh, So it was a true test for me to step outside of my comfort zone. And that's really what I've found about myself is that if I start to feel really nervous about something, it's because I need to do it. I need to be a little uncomfortable because that's how I know I'm going to challenge myself. So I ended up working in about five or six different buildings in Connecticut. So I wasn't just one position. I was all over. I was kidney stone dietitian. I did cancer, weight management. Um, I did a little bit of everything, which I loved. And I got to meet some of the best people um, around. There were I don't know, 30 uh, registered dietitians through the Yale system. And I could be wrong on that, but they're lovely. And they taught me so much and they were wonderful. So I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciated my time there. I appreciated, appreciated my ability to make friends and to prove to myself that I am okay wherever I am. Like I almost found that it's almost like I think back to my eating disorder as a bit of a crush, crutch, like, I didn't feel secure within myself enough to trust myself. And, and really with that move, I realized I can do it. I can, I can find my way around a random state and I can make people laugh and I can do a really good job there. So, um, so that was an awesome experience. So in 2018, um, unfortunately 
fortunately, my father's doing fine, but he was diagnosed with a type of neuroendocrine pancreatic cancer. And so through Connecticut, I was able to help him get into my old cancer center because I was pretty well connected. And he ended up having a Whipple procedure. It was a pretty big surgery and he was cured. He's doing just fine. The interesting thing was that at the time of his diagnosis, I received a phone call from one of my best friends who happens to be in the oncology pharmacy. And she said, Braganini, your old job just opened up again. Would you consider moving back? And it was a very hard decision, but I feel like I quieted my brain and I trusted myself and it was the right decision. So I moved back. So I'm back in the same chair, same office, same people that I left. And I was nervous that I wouldn't be making the right decision just because I found that I didn't want to go back into my comfort zone of safety and shelter. So I feel like settling back in here, um, when I start feeling myself, the word isn't stagnant, but when I start feeling itchy, and maybe you feel this way, Angel, uh, when I start feeling a little itchy or not bored, maybe, um, I'm always looking for new opportunities. And that's when I happen to see the uh, Academy's spokesperson for media come up and I took a shot and I applied. And I honestly, I seriously can't believe I got it. And it, that, again, was a blessing. So, I mean, no, I can. I can believe it because I, I think and I know I'm good at what I do, but I just know how talented and well-spoken so many dietitians are, especially the spokespeople. So I know that um, that I'm going to learn a lot, but I hope I have a lot to offer too. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I'm looking at, I think that's probably my journey. That's a hey. long minutes of a journey but oh no that was great that was great i i loved it and thank you for sharing all about yourself it's uh always great to hear and uh, definitely the uh, playing sports probably helps with the the courage and tenacity to try new things and you know myself i moved from new orleans to new york city and i live in seattle and it's like you can always go home if it sucks but i i kind of feel the same way it's always good to explore you can yeah. you know you got to see the world you got to try different things you gotta yeah. yeah i mean i think too how much do you learn about yourself you know i i used to treat things as a what if i fail mm -hmm. uh and now i actually got a tattoo that says never a failure only a lesson because i feel like there isn't failure you learn something you know, you really do. And I would rather learn through trying, you know, and then maybe having it not go the way that I want versus not, mm -hmm. as um, Brene Brown would say, stepping into the arena. You know, right. I would rather I would rather try. So I, I love when I hear people's stories and how they, they move to different places. And I, I hope that um, my current wife and I now, I you know, we'll be in Michigan for a while, but I think that I'd like to see the country myself. So yeah well opportunity for growth is what it's about it's like we're always you have to expand you got to constantly evolve or yeah you can Absolutely. sleep when we're dead i guess <laughs> I, exactly exactly i just yeah life is too short we should definitely you know try new things so cool well thank you i and you know sharing about your own eating disorder it's um it's always kind of interesting to hear because it's it's really funny i when i did my internship i was like oh i never really want to deal with the eating disorder side of things yeah. and then of course i started seeing the eating disorder side of things because i got a major in psychology right and you start talking to people and you start seeing it and it's like okay well it's kind of amazing because it is a a challenge to try to look at this puzzle and how do we navigate around it because you have these more psychological things that are blocking treatment and especially to it felt like your journey kind of worked out well and that you were encouraging people to try to eat more which yeah. of course like symbiotic relationship you benefit from Absolutely. from that because yeah. if you were doing weight management and you're like oh i want to lose weight and well, i got the <laughs> i got the keys to the kingdom right here <laughs> i know and it, it definitely and i actually just got that when i was talking to you i've never thought of it like that before yeah. 
But it's so true. I think the countertransference on my patients would have not been healthy for them or me. Right. And there's some air of nourishment that comes in with cancer. And it's just like that for for me now. Food, I, I don't, I feel really lucky that I've gotten to, to be where I am as far as legalizing food, loving food, enjoying right. food. My wife has pictures of me on our honeymoon and I basically ate my way through through Maine just because I love that I get to taste it and experience it. Um, so I feel very lucky in that, but I also feel like my eating disorder taught me lots about what other people might be struggling with as far as using food to cope, using Absolutely. food um, to to fill. Um, and, and like you said, there is all, there's always a psychological component to it. It's not just eat your broccoli and then you'll be better. It's, you know, how were you, how were you raised? How was your upbringing? How was your interaction with your parents regarding food? What taught you? What do you nourish yourself with? And so I'm almost thinking it made me a better practitioner in the long run. I'm just happy that I stuck with therapy and I had a lot of people that really, um, and I identified with other people and their experiences too, I think. Um, I think I always like to learn from other people and what they've been through, what they tried, what didn't work, what worked, that kind of thing, so. Well, that's that's part of being a good practitioner is being able to feel empathy and see it from their perspective and what exactly will it take to, Absolutely. you know, because like I said, it's like a puzzle. We're trying to like figure out, yeah. it's a, I guess a Rubik's cube, <laughs> kind of like you're trying to figure out the, Always. the ways to make it work. And Always. I've never, got, I've never got the Rubik's cube. Never no, once. Okay. No, never I, once. I, I quit. I looked at it. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Thank you. I, I appreciate yeah. you telling your journey. Thank so, you. What would you say has been the most enlightening and the most humbling aspect of trying to do media? What would you say? Well, enlightening, I actually had to look up, I knew what enlightening meant, but I wanted to look up the exact definition because I wanted to think, all right, what is enlightening about it? There's so many things that are enlightening. I think watching other people perform their craft on TV, watching fellow spokespeople, dietitians, you know, again, there's always a learning curve for me. I like, and I think Amy Kimberling said this, but I like having a platform. I like being able to get up there and have a message. And and it's been enlightening when I'll have um, a friend's um, mom contact me. I saw you on Channel Eight. Great suggestions. It's been it's been nice when I feel like when I'm on TV, I can actually reach someone, and what my message is sticks with them. I mean, that's really why we do this, right? Um, I think it's enlightening also for me because I've learned a lot about um, speaking of my anxiety. I really like the high that I feel when I'm done on TV. I, I get pretty nervous about it prior to you, but then there's this euphoric high. I don't, I can't, I don't know if you get this, but I just feel like I could conquer the world. And so that's interesting too. It's like, I'm so uncomfortable before and nervous. And I'm always like, why do I do this to myself? Why am I doing this? <laughs> well, I know why I do this, you know, right. It, yeah, it's yeah. It, to be able to deliver the message, but it's also being, you know, being able to challenge ourselves and always maybe learn from each, uh, in, you know, experience. So I think that's enlightening. And I'm, I'm just very thankful that many dietitians across the United States have platforms for getting the correct science-based information to the public. I just think it's super important. Um, I also think I've learned that I like it when I'm seeing other people communicate on TV or in, you know, um, articles. And if they infuse a little humor in there, and Angel, again, that's what I really like about you. I just think that there's a there's sometimes it, nutrition can be so hard to figure out and so serious and it is scary for people. Should I be eating this or not eating this? I think making it a little light is kind of nice too, and maybe laughing a little bit. And I think sometimes I find more connection with people when they're they're real about their stories, you know? So that, I guess, I don't know if that's enlightening, but- No, um, but that is a part of it, yeah, totally. Yeah, what I find humbling is kind of the same. It's just how um, sometimes hard it is to go on TV and, you know, it's first when you're getting started, where do you look? What, um, I think the thing that I have the hardest time with is timing out my segment. You know, like if I have four minutes, I might get done with my spiel in two and then just kind of like, okay, now what? <laughs> or I'm on my second to last food and she's like, well, we're running out of time. And I'm like, well, what about the couscous, you know, or something. So I think that that is humbling. Plus, I think one of the most humbling experience, two humbling experiences, one, I was paid by the juice company to travel to Atlanta, Georgia. They did a semi 
um, I think it's national TV spot where I was promoting a juice smoothie. It was a frozen juice concentrate. And I had gone to Nashville first. They flew me to Atlanta and I was kind of schlepping all of the stuff with me through the airport. And so um, I found my way. I got dressed the next day. I made it to the set. I was all excited. And I had uh, four minutes until air. And they said, all right, where's the smoothie? I left it at the hotel. Oh, I left it at the hotel, Angel. And so I was like, oh my gosh. And I, I started to cry. I, I have a very easy cryable. I'm very, I can come to tears very easy. But then I thought, pull it together, Braganini. You got to go on. You got to do it. And if somehow I did. I said, why don't you just pull up a picture of the, the smoothie? I'll put ice. I'll put the fruit in the thing. We'll pretend, blah, blah, blah. And we're good. And it, And I was so it went so well, but then of course I got down and burst into tears. So humbling is all the stuff you have to remember and do. Another humbling experience was local TV. I don't like to cook on TV and I say this to everyone, I won't do it anymore because I don't know the equipment well, I'm not used to it. So they turned the pan on, I was gonna put some oil in the skillet and she had turned it on pretty hot and I didn't know. And I poured the oil in and I burnt the host. She got oh. spattered with oil and they didn't ever air the segment. So, and that's the only time. So I think humbling is that it's, humbling is also that the, the reporters can take you in, in any direction, which is why I appreciate our media training for this, the academy is they give you really good bridging statements and really good ability to pause, redirect, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't know, that's kind of, those. that's right, my cool. answer. Yeah. Awesome, that was great, that was great. Um, so next question for you. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? Well, I've been thinking about this too. I think truthfully, as I said, with the Connecticut experience, I would have applied for internships out of state. I would have um, just challenged myself to go and maybe be alone someplace where I had to rely on myself earlier rather than later, because I think that would have taught me a lot more a lot earlier. And, you know, here I am almost 50 that, I, you know, I could have maybe caught up there. But again, I've learned a lot through that. Um, I have to think about it. I think that's probably the biggest thing. You know, if anything, like I mentioned to you when we were getting ready, to, I think just reaching out to other dietitians more, um, getting involved in state legislature more. I recently applied to be on the one of the board members for the Michigan Academy. And it was fancy and the sports spokespeople that did that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just feel like everyone is is involved with with something. And I, I think the more places we can be and the more we lend our voice to the important causes that we can, you know, fight hunger and we can do things the better. So I think that's probably it is just, again, stepping outside of my comfort zone and challenging myself a little bit. Um, also, I think the other thing that I would have done is just been nicer to myself along the way. Um, and really try to cultivate that I've come a long way and I'm, um, I've made a lot of friends and good connections and I feel like I make a difference. And I think that if I also would have heart worked harder to learn that earlier on, I would have saved myself a hundred thousand dollars in therapy. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, no, I, I think that honestly, I think the path that I was on is a good one, but again, I think stepping outside of your comfort zone, going different places, meeting new people, trying new things. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So next question, what does the future hold for you? I think, you know, in the present time, I'm just going to continue to work on my social media platforms. I'm, it's funny, you know, to, to learn how to do Instagram or TikTok and that kind of thing, but I'm really interested in doing a better job with that. And I have a lot to learn from you doing podcasts. Um, so I'd like to really cultivate that uh, and, and a better relationship, not better, but a, a continued relationship with the Academy and the spokesperson world, um, step into the Michigan um, possible board. Eventually, I would like to be a, a professor. I love to teach. I, I just love, love to be up there, especially with content that I'm prepared for and to have students or it's lately patients just nod and, and ask good questions. It's so fulfilling. So eventually one day I would like to step in academia. Okay, cool. That sounds awesome. And so the final question for you is what, or do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of registered dietitian nutritionists? Um, I actually wrote myself some notes, but I would say, I, I guess 
I would say try new things, cultivate relationships. Honestly, you will be surprised how, if I'm speaking to someone of the younger generation, how many times where you're in an internship, make good relationships with your preceptors, try not to lose touch in your first job, be open to learning new things. Always keep in touch with the people that you've worked with along the way, because I promise you it'll come back around. It will, it will come back around. And I think really working on, I think really working on knowing what is out there as far as from a science perspective, but also knowing what other folks are saying. So you kind of understand and won't be caught off guard if you have a patient ask you about Lysol, no, NyQuil chicken. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I don't. So I think that is important. Um, but mostly just, you know, be a good team member. You know, I think boosting each other up through working as part of a team really will set you up for success in any, any job you end up in. Well, with that being said, I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your story. I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.